here to dive into industry trends with leading ETF experts. This is ETF Spotlight with Nina Mishra. Hello and welcome to ETF Spotlight. I'm your host, Nina Mishra. My guest today is Matt Tuttle, CEO and CIO at Turtle Capital Management. Uh, we're talking about two new ETFs that have been generating a lot of buzz lately. These ETFs let investors bet on or against CNBC's uh, Jim Cramer. Matt, welcome back. Great to have you on the show. Hey, thank you for having me. So let's talk about these ETFs. Uh, they are the inverse Kramer ETF, ticker symbol SGIM, and the long Kramer ETF, ticker symbol LGIM. So tell us why you decided to launch these ETFs. Were you planning these for many years? Or did you see any demand from investors for uh, these products? So yes and yes. Um, a, a bunch of reasons we wanted to do this. I mean, the most obvious is uh, you know Jim's well-known reverse Midas touch of being able to get stuff fairly consistently really, really, really wrong when it comes to markets and in different stocks. So you know that that's the obvious one. You know the other reason we wanted to do it is you know for the longest time I've known and you know you see it in the market over and over again that you know the consensus out there is usually wrong and you know i've always kind of wondered and experimented with different ways to try to monetize that uh with very little success uh the beauty of jim kramer is he's kind of like the consensus on steroids because with <laughs> him you know he's got to first off he's got to swing at every single pitch so it's not like you can call into Mad Money and be like, hey, Jim, what do you think about Microsoft? I mean, he can't say, yeah, you know, I don't really know. Or, yeah, I think it could go up, but it could go down. He's got to give an opinion. And he's being hit left and right with different types of stocks. And, you know, and he's like everybody else. You know, when the market's going up, he's going to be more bullish. When it's going down, he's going to be more bearish. And then again, his well-known reverse Midas touch. So to me, S. Jim was a great way to kind of bet against this consensus and have a really good portfolio diversifier. And you know, L. Jim, I see as more of a tactical kind of trading thing. Uh, you know, it's going to be a concentrated portfolio that's going to get in and out of things pretty quickly. You know, based on stuff that people are calling up Jim and asking him about, or stuff that Jim wants to talk about. Okay, so you launched uh, the SARC ETF, uh, which allows investors to bet against Kathy Wood and her ARC Innovation Fund. And this was pretty successful. And I should add that you have since sold it to Access Investments. So this was one of the best performing ETFs in the first half of 2022. And then later in May last year, you launched the TARC ETF, uh, which is twice uh, uh, the ARC Innovation Fund. So why did you decide to launch both these products at the same time uh, this time around? Yeah, so, you know, Sark and Tark were a, a very different situation. So coming into, you know, the summer of 2021, we really were starting to get the sense that something really bad was happening in the market. And, you know, when we talked about Sark, we talked about it as, you know, look, this is, this is a better way to hedge if you think the market's going down. So we felt the timing was pretty about as close to perfect and it worked out basically perfect for launching that product. I did not feel the time was right to launch a long product, especially a levered long product. So we delayed, you know, that until we felt that the, you know, the timing in the market was a little bit better. Uh, you know, with this, the timing doesn't necessarily matter as much. You know, L Jim's going to always be long. But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, where we sit in the market. And S. Jim, you know, it's going to be a pretty flexible portfolio. It's going to I mean, it's always going to have some long exposure and some short exposure. 
But we would expect, you know, again, as the market is going up, that it would be adding more and more short exposure. And if the market's going down, it'd be adding more long exposure, basically the opposite of, of what everybody else is doing. Um, and so we just felt like, no sense in 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 waiting and delaying one and launching the other. Okay, makes sense. So were you surprised by the approval of these products? So because when I saw the filing, I thought it's maybe just for fun, just a gimmick. I wasn't sure whether the SEC is going to approve uh, these ETFs because they have uh, Jim Cramer's name. And uh, but here we are. Uh, so were you surprised by the approval? Because usually our SEC is very, very conservative. So I wasn't, you know, I knew it would take longer and it did. You know, typically when you're doing an ETF, it takes 75 days. Um, I had a feeling this would be longer than 75, which it was. But, you know, at the end of the day, the underlying investments are stocks. And, you know, we met all the requirements of, of the ETF rules. You know, there were certain tweaks we had to make. We added tracker to the, uh, to the ETF title which I actually like better. Uh, so I think that was an improvement. But no, I wasn't surprised. I knew it would be a pain, but I, I, I knew that we were going to end up getting these through at some point. So tell us how exactly you monitor his recommendations. Uh, do you watch his shows on TV morning and evening? Do you follow his tweets as well? Uh, and he manages an investing club too, right? Uh, so do you take into account those holdings as well? So everything except for the investment club. Um, you know, unfortunately, we've got to watch. Uh, he's typically on from 8.45 to 10. So, you know, there are three of us watching that. Uh, obviously mad money and he tweets during the day um you know and people have asked well you know can you make it technical or use ai and you know and the problem is there's sometimes when he's not totally clear uh you know where it's not hey buy 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 or sell 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 and for our purposes we're only going to act if he is clearly saying to buy something or clearly saying to sell something we do not monitor his charitable trust. I don't know what's in it. I don't want to know what's in it. Uh, you know, the sense I get is that's more of a buy and hold portfolio and he's got, you know, other people working on it. Um, I am much more interested in the stuff he comes on in the morning or at night and wants to talk about. And I'm much more interested in what people are calling and asking him about. To me, that's, you know, the freshest, type of stuff, uh, you know, versus a long term buy and hold portfolio. So in addition to individual stocks, either long positions or short positions, do you also hold long or short positions on broad market ETFs if he's bullish or bearish on the market or if he's bullish or bearish on a particular sector, then do you short or, you know, hold that sector ETF? Yeah, we would. If, if there's no specific stock and, you know, and a lot of times he does this. I mean, earlier in the year before the fund came out, you know, we were still tracking and, you know, he said I wouldn't own FANG stocks. So in that situation, there are FANG ETNs that we could have could have used. There were times he was negative on the NASDAQ. So tons of tools there. There are other times he comes out and he's just bullish. And, you know, that's a situation we would use SPY or or an inverse S&P ETF or short SPY, depending on, you know, what we wanted to do. So, yeah, if he's if he's talking about the market or a sector, we'll use an ETF for that. So tell us a little bit about the construction of these ETFs. You, I think you alluded to the number of holdings that these are going to be quite concentrated portfolios. Tell us how many stocks uh, generally, how do you weight the holdings and for how long do you intend to hold them uh, in the portfolio? Are the, is the portfolio going to be rebalanced very frequently? Yeah, so SGM is gonna be a little bit bigger because there where you know we're going long and we're going short so typically that's going to have let's say 30 to 50 stocks in it l gym will be more like you know 25 to 40. we mostly equal weight things 
unless he's talking about like meme stocks or potential bankruptcy situations, you know, those things we'd have a lower weight in the portfolio. And then as far as rebalancing, it just it depends on how active he is. So, you know, I didn't realize, you know, we launched on Thursday. He went on vacation on Thursday. So, you know, we've held on to our initial portfolio. But, you know, when he's out there, you know, talking about a bunch of stuff, you know, we will add on the new stuff and take out some older stuff. So I would expect typically, you know, we're going to hold names for like a week, a week and a half, except for certain situations, which he keeps coming back to. So like NVIDIA is something where, I mean, I think, you know, this morning I was watching him and David Faber joked how many times he said NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is probably something we're going to hold on to for a bit until he stops talking about it. But, you know, the normal stock, you know, generally a week, week and a half, and it'll be out of the portfolio and replaced by something new. So I'm looking at the portfolio holding currently. So SGM is long snap, Palantir, short companies like NVIDIA and AMD that you mentioned. LGM is long, uh, CyberArk, ASML holdings, another chip stocks. It's long Tesla as well. And uh, does it have any short holdings? So LGM No, is LGM a- doesn't have any short holdings. The only way LGM will go short is if Kramer specifically says, which I don't think he ever does, uh, you know, I would short this. Okay, makes sense. So have you been tracking his recommendations for a long time? Have you done any backtesting? I've seen some crazy numbers uh, on social media about the performance of the so-called inverse Kramer portfolio. Uh, I'm not sure whether they can be trusted, but have you done any backtesting? So I haven't. Um, I've seen all the, the studies that I'm sure you've seen and yeah, and the problem is, you know, discerning what is a buy, buy, buy and what is a sell, 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 because sometimes it's not clear. And then also, what's your holding period going to be? Because he may say, you know, hey, buy, buy, buy Microsoft and then never say sell. So, you know, it, it just it makes it extremely hard to back test. For me, again, what I'm more looking at is I'm looking to kind of capture, for lack of a better word, the alpha that comes from the fact that people just tend to be wrong and having something that's uncorrelated to the portfolio. Uh, you know, so that that's the effect I'm more concerned with. Certainly, you know, I've seen the numbers. The numbers look very interesting. You know, anecdotally, you know, you hear the calls, you know, you, you know, you see the calls about about, uh, you know, Coinbase and in Bitcoin that he was wrong and the meta calls and, you know, all the way back to the Bear Stearns call. But, you know, a lot of stuff in between. So certainly anecdotally, I have expectations for the portfolio. So were you surprised by the market reception? Now, these are very new products, so we cannot talk much about the asset gathering or performance uh, right now, but they have been trading in good volumes, and they both of them, SGM in particular, has generated a lot of buzz in the media. So were you surprised by by that kind of reception? I wasn't surprised by that at all, but... You know, I, I think of anything that's a little bit strange. I'm kind of watching the 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 trades in S Gym, and there's so many trades of one or two shares. That's a little bit surprising to me. I mean, I guess it's probably a lot of younger people just who think it's a really cool idea and just buy one 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 or two shares. So that's a little bit interesting. So I don't think the idea of this being a diversified you know asset to add to a portfolio has quite caught on yet i mean for me when it first came out i put five percent of my portfolio in it and i'm just going to sit with it because you know to me it's a diversified new type of asset class but i think what we've seen is you know a lot of retail investors buying small amounts uh with with a lot of trade so that's been interesting i didn't expect that 
Really interesting. So what's next for Turtle Capital? You have been very innovative with your products, uh, the one against Kathy Wood, uh, Sark and Tark, and then single stock ETFs. Uh, any other interesting products in the pipeline? So we, we've got two things in filing. Uh, you know, one is an emerging market ETF that excludes companies based on national security concerns. So like all the news you're seeing now about Chinese companies selling arms to Russia, you know, companies like that would be excluded. But we would still have China exposure. So it, it just excludes companies that we look at as bad actors from a national security standpoint. So I think that's that, I think that's an interesting product. And we plan to build out that whole national security idea. We also recently filed for a, a 2X version of DBMF, which is a, a very popular managed futures ETF, because I think you know managed futures is an asset class along with short Jim Cramer that you should have in your portfolio. And you know, the volatility signature of managed futures lends itself well to leverage. And then we've got a bunch of things that we've got in, in different stages of planning. So yeah, expect to see a lot of launches from us this year. Very interesting. And DBMF uh, is uh, very interesting for sure, because it was one of the best performing ETFs of last year, which was a very challenging year for stocks and bonds and most uh, other traditional asset classes. That ETF did very well, both in terms of performance as well as asset gathering. And we had Andrew Beer on the podcast a few weeks back. So we'll definitely keep an eye out for those filings and launches. And have you back on the show then. Always fun to chat with you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. That was Matt Tuttle of Tuttle Capital Management. Uh, the tickers again are S Jim for the short ETF and L Jim for the long one. Easy to remember. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Also, make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss any episode. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please email podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.